This bad boy right here can hold so many operating systems. I'm Evil's Box. I've been trying to build myself a Hackintosh for like 12 or more years now, and it's always been a headache. Managing your own kecks, finding the right hardware. I was not in a position to buy specific hardware to be compatible with Hackintoshing, and messing around with Clover and all of that was always a nightmare. And even in Snazzy Labs' own Hackintosh videos, he never did a tutorial segment because it was basically, it's always hell. And here are a bunch of guides that you have to find every individual detail for your hardware. Then he posted a recent one using OpenCore, a new bootloader I had not yet heard of, and it turned out with Zen 2 AMD hardware, you don't really need to specifically pick out your hardware anymore. Most of it just kind of works out of the box. So I finally set out to build me my own Hackintosh. We're going to talk about that and this Nwin 309 case for the second time after a word from this video's sponsor. If you've watched my videos for any length of time, you've probably heard about TubeBuddy. Or at least I'd think so, but apparently 70% of my watch time comes from viewers who aren't subscribed. So this is for you. First, well, get subscribed. Maybe enable notifications. Come on now. Second, check out TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy is an incredible toolkit to help you manage your YouTube channel and improve your productivity and your video's performance quite easily. You can update videos in bulk, optimize your SEO, syndicate to social media, back up your metadata, and more, all with a simple browser extension. Head to eposvox.com slash TubeBuddy to learn more and download it for free. They cover educational topics for YouTubers on their YouTube channel, and I cover YouTube news on their blog as well. That's eposvox.com slash TubeBuddy to download it for free, but do subscribe first, all right? So I made a video about this case back in the fall of 2019, maybe the start of winter, a few months ago now, where I was trying to use it for my main rig while I temporarily swapped to the 3900X. Ran into some issues where this case was basically a big hotbox. It has no intake fans that come with it. It has no real room for intake. As you can see here, it has a beautiful, you know, disco light DDR looking LED panel as the front screen. There's no ventilation or even an attempt at putting fans here. And then all the fan movement is inside and I tried slapping on a good, you know, usually performs really well Noctua air cooler in there to keep it quiet and just kept overheating my 3900X or at least running hotter than I would prefer. I eventually moved parts around, slopped the 3700X into here and didn't really have a project to come back to this case like I wanted. And that is where my Hackintosh rig came in. After seeing Snazzy Labs' guide, thank you Quinn, about setting up with OpenCore, I just followed the wiki. There were a few extra steps, like very specific steps that you have to do right after the other, especially once you get the operating system installed that his guide, for whatever reason, didn't even mention. But the OpenCore wiki details everything, so I'll have it linked in the below in the description below. I'm not even gonna provide dare to provide my own tutorial because I followed someone else's. I'm just gonna point you to Snazzy's video and the OpenCore wiki. Got that set up. I'm gonna estimate if you don't screw up and wipe your entire install USB drive in the Mac disk utility like I did, it would probably take at most two hours to get up and running, assuming you can find what you need for your hardware, which is pretty crazy. So inside this Nwin 309 case, we're rocking the ASRock X570 Tai Chi motherboard that was part of the press kit for the Zen 2 launch back in July. We've got the 3700X CPU. We've got a Ryzen or an AMD Radeon RX 580 graphics cards because modern macOS Catalina does not support NVIDIA anymore. Apple and NVIDIA are at war. Unless you want to use like 700 series NVIDIA GPUs, AMD is where it's at. So I slapped the RX 580 in there, eight gigabytes, lots of power for what I'm going to use it for. And then I've got a M.2 NVMe drive in, on, installed on the motherboard for running macOS off of. I've got a PCIe SSD that I run uh, Linux off of, and that's going to be running either Pop! OS or some sort of Arch variant, because I started with Pop! OS. I really wanted to dig into it. I had not messed with it yet. It used to be, you know, work with System76 a lot, actually. But I'm running into some issue where the compositor or something with the graphics driver is preventing me from using the XHSM screen capture in OBS Studio. And half the point of this is to do OBS tutorials and things like that on operating systems that my main rig doesn't run. So that doesn't work. <laughs> so. I may end up switching distros at some point and distro hopping a little bit. And then I have a WD Blue 500 gig, uh, just normal SATA SSD slapped in there to run Windows off of and I actually installed that over on my test bench because anytime I tried installing it on here, I had to physically remove the drives or else Windows would overwrite the bootloaders. And since it's underneath the stu the these X570 motherboards all have these giant motherboard plate heat plates for the NVMe drives. And that's, I have to tear the entire rig out just to remove one drive 
So I just installed Windows without any updates or anything on another machine and pulled it in here so that it has its own bootloader and I can just update and configure from there. And then I got Brave. I've also got 32 gigs, I believe, of Corsair Vengeance RAM at 4200 megahertz, although I only have it running at 3200 megahertz to keep timings down and keep it more compatible with Zen 2. But I got Brave and I'm throwing in the Thunderbolt 3 add-in card on this motherboard. I have not tested it yet. I will add in some voiceover if my experience goes anywhere, but it has been theorized that it's fine to get working in Mac OS with the Hackintosh. Like it should just work fine, but maybe not plug and play support or certain devices. And then of course it works in Windows and it's supported on Ryzen 2 and I need to do more Thunderbolt testing for upcoming projects. So I'm hoping this works out. The CPU is now being cooled by the Fractal Design S36, a beautiful 360 millimeter AIO, solid black, got a nice configuration. It comes with some super quiet fans, but I kept the crazy diffuse light fans uh, that this case actually comes with on there just to keep the theme together. Looks pretty good, hopefully performs a lot better than the air cooler was. And then I took one of the Fractal fans that came with the cooler and put it at the bottom of the case for intake. Because again, this case has no intake and now it only has one intake fan. And that's because I couldn't fit anymore since the motherboard literally sits on the bottom of the case between the PCIe SSD and the actual headers on the motherboard. I just can't fit another fan in the bottom of that case. So we've got one intake fan. Hopefully it's enough. Hopefully it cools it. Again, I wanted to return to this case and finish it with a more full review. It looks great. It has a lot of cool features. I love the side panel IO and buttons and things like that. And I love the overall aesthetics and what they're trying to do with it. But design wise, there's a lot of weirdness with this case that really frustrates me when it comes down to, I have to remove the feet in order to install fans in the bottom. I can't shut this without squishing down my pumps tubing, which isn't good for it because that's the only way it would run. And that's the only way it could ever run. Even if you were doing a custom loop, that doesn't work out. That height doesn't make any sense. There's nowhere for cable management to go, even on their own included first party fans, like the extra cable just kind of flops around. So you have this kind of, thankfully it's tinted tempered glass, so you don't see the cables, you just see the light sources. But there's just a lot of weirdness where the actual physical work, you know, working design of this case doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it's beautiful. And I'm gonna try to download the software to customize the LED and try to get like an Apple logo on it or something to represent the Hackintosh, but this is my triple boot test rig for doing tutorials and getting things set up here for 2020. I'm pretty stoked. Again, we're running Linux, Mac, and Windows, and I'm gonna be using this for tutorials moving forward. I have it hooked up to my 3440 by 1440, 100 hertz ultra wide. And man, Mac OS at that ultra wide resolution at 100 hertz looks phenomenal. So does Pop OS. That was part of the reason I wanted to use it was they have been doing a lot of work for high DPI stuff. Looks great. I haven't figured out how I'm gonna capture entirely yet because my goal is to clone it out to a capture card, but the capture card I'm cloning it to doesn't support non-standard resolutions. So we'll see. So here's what the final setup mostly looks like. This is the Triple Boot Hack Pro, whatever you want to call it, 3700X AMD Hackintosh running macOS Catalina right here. Most things seem to work within the context of what actually works within a Hackintosh. Got it on the ASUS PA34VC ultra wide monitor. This is 3440 by 1440, 100 hertz, 10 bit HDR, and has really good color accuracy and color space reproduction for video editing and photography and things like that. It is incredible. I do have a review of it coming soon. I've had it for a few months now, and it's sitting on the Arctic Z1 Pro monitor arm, which is a beastly monitor arm. I've actually been searching for the months that I've had this monitor for an arm that can hold it up and support it because this monitor weighs a ton at the eye level that I prefer. I'm a fairly tall dude. The default monitor stand and most monitor arms can't hold this much weight up that high. Z1 Pro does it. I'll cover that more in the monitor review, but I have it set up with just a basic uh, glorious PC gaming model O mouse and Razer Black Widow Tournament Edition keyboard. However, I may end up picking up a wireless Apple keyboard or something if I can, because I'm having issues with the control versus command and option key assignment on this keyboard. I don't know why this has to be such a headache on Mac when most systems just let you manually set what keys are because it's that easy. But it's set up, it works, it looks glorious. Uh, I am having trouble getting the, uh, the SATA SSD to detect with <laughs> Windows, oddly enough. Uh, I wanted to go ahead and test and have in this video me having Thunderbolt 3 working. Unfortunately, I was unable, I was unsuccessful in doing so. Put in the card, activated in the motherboard, which immediately made macOS stop reading as bootable in BIOS. And that's because enabling Thunderbolt 
disables the top NVMe slot or the M.2 slot on my X570 Tai Chi motherboard, which I didn't find in the manual and, and didn't realize. So then I still had to tear the entire build apart, move it down one. Then when I enable Thunderbolt 3, Mac OS just doesn't boot. I select it from the bootloader and it just like boot loops into nothing. So I am working with people in the AMD OS X Discord. I'll have that linked below and they're putting me in contact with the right people to try to figure it out because there are success stories on the forums of people with my exact motherboard getting Thunderbolt 3 success working. So maybe we'll have a follow up video about that. I did have the Elgato Thunderbolt 3 Pro Dock right here. Yeah, from the same company that makes capture cards. That was pretty stoked to share in this video. Nice little dock, but unfortunately it will have to sit here as a nice paperweight for now until we actually get it working. But just wanted to share the beautiful setup because honestly, it's freaking gorgeous. But I just wanted to walk you through my progress here. Swapped over the cooler to the fractal. Should cool a lot better. It's already immediately much quieter. That was another thing was it, would get, it got pretty loud. And this is just, just gonna be my, you know, experiment box for AMD encoder testing for anything Mac OS. I can finally make Mac OS tutorials because I have a Mac that has hardware. Now, there's still gonna be some issues with the Hackintosh with Adobe software to a degree and it's not going to perform as well GPU wise necessarily as an actual Mac necessarily because it doesn't have the iGPU to take advantage of for something like Final Cut. Uh, and I haven't even tried getting iMessage or anything set up since I don't have an iPhone, although that may change at some point. But I've already been messing around in Mac OS and it runs really smooth and I've got a couple cool videos planned on it and I'm super stoked to finally get to dive into this. I love learning new operating systems and things like that. So just wanted to share this build with you guys as a little weekend project here. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button if you did. Subscribe for more tech education. I'm Evil's Vox. I'll see you next time.